Welcome back to the Volander. So, I've been remiss. I did make a little bit of a video on how to create mods back in the day, how to program mods, but I didn't teach anybody how to do any programming block stuff, and, well, that's downright mean of me, because the programming block is much easier to use, and it's very powerful. But people are afraid of it. They're afraid of the programming block, because they don't really understand how it works, and, uh, all that C-sharp scares them. As you can see, I switched over into creative mode to do this part. So I've just created 10 sound blocks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this hall ring with sound. But how do you trigger these sound blocks? Well, you could use a timer, and you could trigger them like, you know, a timer that triggers the first one after every 10 seconds, and the second one after every 10 seconds, you know, 10 different timers running in tandem or whatever. You could use a sensor so that as you walk by, they get triggered. But I want to trigger them randomly. I want them to be like, this one randomly, this one randomly, this one randomly. It's very easy to do using a programming block. And it'll teach you the basic idea of how to, how to use these programming blocks. Because the programming block can only interact with the world in two ways. There are only two things that you have to know how to do. One is how to search the ship for blocks. And the other is how to activate stuff on the blocks. Basically, the programming block can search the ship for blocks, and then it can interact with those blocks in the same way that you can when you're in this menu. So those sound blocks I just created. It can do the same thing I can do here. We're toggling them on and off, changing their volume. I don't think that it can change which sound it uses, but uh, it can do more or less everything else that you can do here. Uh, I, I guess I better put these sounds in. Uh, so let's go ahead and start at zero. Why is there no zero here? Well, that's an oversight, whoever made this sound mod. Why is there no zero? Unimaginable. You evil person. You forgot zero. Fine, I'll start at one. Nope, nothing. Okay, so this sound block is going to just be deleted. Goodbye, sound block 10. We knew you. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of those sound blocks, but I need to have a programming block to do that. I'm using a reskin of the programming block, which is just uh, called the AI Core. It's exactly like the programming block, except it's pretty. This is it here. So how do we make this AI Core, this programmable block, find all of the sound blocks? Well, we have to edit the code, of course. So this is the annoying part you have to know a couple of magic phrases. Uh, the syntax for interacting with the game world is atrocious, um, and you're just going to have to memorize them. There aren't very many things you need to memorize, but the ones you do need to memorize are really obnoxious. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to show you down below uh, in the description, there should be a link to uh, a reference where you can find some of this stuff as well. Alright, so let's talk about how to program this. We want to find uh, the sound blocks that we're looking for. So I, my, sound block, block. So what does this mean? Well, sound block is obviously the thing we're looking for. The my is a prefix that is often attached by programmers because it means that it's the one you created. The reason for that is because, well, it's not important for sound block, but things like assembler, factory, block, those sorts of things tend to crop up in C Sharp and other programming languages as their own thing. So if you prefix my, then everyone will understand that it's part of the program. So my block is much safer than block. The I stands for instantiated. So I my sound block means space engineers sound block in the game world. A sound block that actually exists in the game world. So we are finding an actual block in the game world. Pretty straightforward, right? So we've declared that there is a sound block, but we haven't specified it yet. How are we going to search for a sound block? There are two methods. One method involves getting a long list of all of the sound blocks. The problem with that method is you have to know how to pass in uh, arrays and then cast from one object to another object uh, class. And it's, 
it's a little bit iffy for a starter. So we're going to do it a lot easier. We're going to start off much more simply. And we're just going to find a sound block that has the number that we're looking to find. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to go ahead and fetch a sound block by name. Block equals grid grid terminal system. This means the ship. More specifically, all the blocks within the ship. So this is us asking for blocks, or a block. Get block with name sound block. So now we can go ahead and make sure that we got that block just by throwing an exception for kicks. Throw new exception found block Let's just check and see whether we got the block, shall we? If... Sorry, this editor is actually really wonky. Uh, if block equals null, throw new exception, found no sound blocks. Otherwise, throw an exception, found block. So all we're doing now is we're searching for that block named sound block, and if we find it, we throw the exception that says found it, and if we don't find it, we throw the exception that says we didn't find it. We check the code, and it says, What? I don't understand. That's because we have to cast this. Uh, this is an introduction to the troubles we're going to have later when we try and do this casting. This does not actually return a sound block. It returns an, ah, uh, what is it called? An iMy, uh, iMy terminal block, which just means a block that you can interface with via the terminal. So we have to actually cast it to a sound block. So we say, as I my sound block. There you go. So let's remember and exit, and then we hit run, found block. So we did find a block named that. So when we go back here and edit it again, instead of saying found block, what do you say we hit play? So if you look at the reference, and you search for sound block, you'll see that it has a number of actions attached to it, including one that says play sound. The problem is that you can't just say block.playsound. That would be way too easy. Uh, this is one of those situations where you have to know that the syntax is going to be a mess. The concept is very, very simple. We're just trying to play a sound. But, uh, you know, click a, click, a, click a terminal button, basically. But because it's intended to work in a terminal, it's actually not a function. It's, a, it's an object that's attached in a specific way. So you have to do some annoying and complex stuff, and you've just got to memorize it or keep it in reference on the side, uh, and then just accept that this is going to be uh, an annoyingly long way to do something that is very, very straightforward. What we're going to do is say get action with name play sound. Let me just double check on the spelling there. Oh, no space. And then we say dot apply block. So here we're saying this is a terminal block and we have to find one of the things you can do via the terminal. The thing we're trying to find is called play sound. So basically we've just said, can you go find us that play sound button? Yeah? Okay. Well, we're going to click it. Now, notice that you have to actually pass it the block as well as get the action off of the block. That's just something you'll have to live with. So let's go ahead and check this code. And remember an exit. We ran it, but we probably can't hear it because it's over on the far side of the terminal. So let's go ahead and walk on over. So it should be playing that sound block, right? Let's go ahead and trigger, trigger it again right now. Is this the one? Yeah. Let's name it something. Uh, cargo bay sound. System. One, one, one. Think you can hear that? It says one. one. Every time we click it, it says one. one. So what, do we, what we really want to do is pick one of the blocks at random. Uh, there are a couple of ways to do that. One is that we can go and find all of the blocks and then pick out of the list. The other is that we can know what blocks are around and go out and find them by name. So in this case, all of our blocks are named the same thing. So if we look at them, they're all named sound block space number. So if we just put a one at the end of this one, we actually have a list of sound blocks that have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is actually what they play. 
Uh, now, obviously, if we really wanted to do this right, we would change this to something like hanger block one or whatever. Uh, but for the moment, this is fine. So we're going to go back out into our cargo bay sound system. And what we want to do is we want to get a number at random between 1 and 9. So we'll go and say uh, string number <laughs> equals... <laughs> that's really bad, but that's okay. String number equals rand dot... I think we just use next. Let's go ahead and throw an exception. Throw new exception number. And this obviously needs to have a two string at the end, or else we'll get the exception that it's not a string. So we actually have to define rand. Now you can do that within main, or you can do it outside of main. Uh, this is actually um, something I'll save until later. So for now, just remember that we need to do it like this way. So what we've just done is we've defined a new random outside of main. Um, we'll have to... I'm not going to go into why that's different than defining it inside of main, but for now, uh, we will just go ahead and call it here. See? Now if we run this, it should say 1, 1, 1. It's not really very random, is it? Hmm. Okay. So the problem is that this has a serious restriction on how many times you can run it. I think you can only run it once per second. Uh, so that's fine. We do have it working now. So instead of throwing a new exception, what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the string of the, the, the phrase that we're going to be using for our sound block. So string sound block number of uh, sound block numbers equals sound block. And then what we can do down here is we can say, we'll call this block name. And instead of just, instead of, just all, instead of all the complex stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to say block name equals, sound block number name, plus random next to string. So what we're doing right now is we are creating the name. We're saying sound block plus a random number from 1 to 9. So it'll come back with sound block 1, sound block 2, sound block 4, sound block 8, sound block 1. So then we say, we'll go ahead and fetch it. But we don't want to fetch sound block. We want to fetch the name that we just created. So now we're going to be fetching a random sound block. Five. Hear that 5? Hear that 7? So now all we have to do is automate it. The thing you have to remember is that these programmable blocks are part of a three-part uh, trio of powerful blocks. The other block that you want to always remember is the timer block and, of course, a sensor block to a lesser extent. These are the things that will actually trigger your uh, functions. So it might be nice to have uh, all this code, but it doesn't do anything if you're not triggering it. So we set up a timer block. We set up the actions. Uh, one of the things we want to do is trigger ourselves, so that we will continually just keep triggering this timer block over and over and over. And the other thing is we would like to trigger the sound block here. I mean the AI sound block here. So this means that we are going to be triggering ourself, and then ourself, and then ourself. And every time we trigger ourself, we also run the system that we just programmed. Let's go out and see if we can hear it. Neat. So that is a way that we can make this so that it picks random values. But you know, that's that's just not good enough for me. So let's go ahead and spice it up a bit with a couple more sound blocks. So those three sound blocks are new ones. 
Let's go ahead and find them and rename them something better. So this sound block should be named uh, AI Sound 1. We'll call it 0. We're already doing 1 to 9, so we might as well keep it at 1. 1 based. <sighs> AI Sound 2 and AI Sound 3. And so what we want to do with these guys is pick sounds that make sense for the hangar bay. Interlock established. Sounds good. Interlock established. We could actually add some more sounds, and maybe we will later. But that should do for now. Uh, so we've just created a couple of new sound blocks. These don't need to be 500 meters anymore. So since we don't need these, uh, since, since these are on a different circuit, these will never be found by this because they are not within this range that we've established. But we do want to go ahead and make uh, our, our core here take them into account. And there are a couple of other things we can do. For example, So these get recompiled whenever you change the code, but they don't recompile every time it's run without changing the code. So that's going to be really useful. I'll show you. Oh wow, this is really, really primitive. We have to tab all these manually. Here we say AI delay equals 1, and we subtract from it, and we say if it's equal to 0, then do this thing. But we also, at the end here, have to say, well, in that case, we can increase it again, right? So, AI delay uh, equals plus plus. So, this will just keep us in an internal loop of doing that one thing over and over and over. But what happens if we change this? So we can say, if ran dot... I guess there's a next double. That seems kind of wasteful. Whatever. So we can say if ran dot next ran dot next double is less than 0.5, then we can this f here. Uh, you probably don't need to worry about that. That's just habit. Um, if it's less than 0.5, then we can add to the delay. But otherwise, we don't. I think the 0.5 is probably wrong. So let's change this to point. Eight. So this says, okay, so there is an 80% chance that we will just continue to do this over and over and over because we keep adding to the delay. So we subtract from the delay, we add to the delay, net zero. But what happens if the AI delay is not equal to zero? If the AI delay is less than zero, what does that mean? Well, basically we want to do the exact same thing except we want to do it with the AI block. So here you can see we've got the sound block number name. We actually want the sound block AI name. Can't even double click, jeez. And rather than random next one nine, we need random next min AI and random next max AI. And up here we actually want min number and max number. That makes it just a little bit easier to deal with later on. So what we've just done is we've said, okay, we'll find that block, and then instead of saying this nonsense here, we just want to set the AI delay to something big, because that'll delay for that number of seconds. So if we set it equal to 5, then we'll have a 5 second delay before our next number is spoken.
It worked, I heard it. Interlock established. Hear it? So now we've got a docking bay where it spouts a random number of numbers and then says one of the AI final codes. Now this is just flavor. Um, there's nothing uh, particularly awesome about this. It's not particularly powerful. But I wanted to show you how to create that kind of stuff without any issues. Um, so that may have been complex uh, to, to watch if you aren't used to it, but let's go back over it one more time and you'll see how basic it really is. All we're doing is searching for a block and then hitting play. So we say we got... I'm going to have to stop it so that I don't go mad here. Hold on. Uh, timer. So we've got this thing that says... So we've just got two classes of blocks, and we just create their names. We've named them what we want them to be named, and we know the pattern of the names. So we can just fabricate that. And we say, okay, well, we know that there are nine of these sound blocks that are just numbers, so we're going to go ahead and call them sound block, and then they're going to be from one to nine. The AI sound is the same. We're going to call it AI sound. We're going to go from one to three. And then we're going to have this delay counter. Um, and the delay counter, this is kind of a shortcut that I probably shouldn't have taken because it makes things a little bit muddy, but it's not very complex, really. So we started at one, and we subtract, and every time it hits zero, we say a number. We say a number by fabricating the name. I told you we already understand the pattern of the names, so we just use the num we use the name base and then we get a number to attach to it. And then we find the sound block by searching for a block of that name. We make sure that the block exists. If it doesn't, we error out. And then we say, okay, find the terminal button on that on that box. Find the terminal button that is play sound and then apply it. So we're basically the code goes in and pretends to open a terminal and then pretends to press the button. Pretty basic, right? And then we say, well, most of the time, most of the time, just increase the AI delay so that we do this every single time. However, whenever we don't increase the AI delay and we fall through, we just want to find the same exact kind of thing, but for the other class of blocks, and we'll set a big delay so that there's a gap between them. This is a very simple code very simple program. Uh, it's a little bit easier to build if you build it outside of this code editor, but as you can see, it wasn't that difficult to build inside of the code editor. All you need to do is memorize a couple of the uh, confusing elements, and then after that, it's pretty easy to program, exactly like you would program any C-sharp code. Um, and this is the basis for some really amazingly powerful tools. Uh, I've created miners that can mine asteroids away to nothing. I've created bots that follow you around. Uh, I've even created some packet transmission systems. Uh, but all of that stuff is based on this basic fundamental idea of searching for blocks and then clicking on the buttons that you can normally use in the terminal. So I hope this has been a good tutorial, and the result of this is that our uh, cargo bay now has a really unique sound to it. In my mind, all ships are defined by their sound. All ships are defined by their sound, and now that we have a cargo bay that sounds unique, I'm quite a bit happier with the nature of this game. The Volander now seems like a place to me, because we've added in unique sound effects. But you know what I am going to do? I'm going to turn that interlock established way down, because it's really friggin' loud. Interlock established. Interlock established. Good. Now, if you want that code, I will have cut and pasted it into the description of the video. And I'll also include a link to the code reference I was using. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it.